Welcome to a basic tutorial for RepSnapper, created by the Penn State Open Source 3D Printing Group. In this video, we will explain how to print a basic 3D object. The first thing you need to know is how to set up RepSnapper. But first, you need to ensure that the printer and the software are connected. To do that, make sure that the printer is turned on and connected to the computer. You will then need to determine which COM port the printer is communicating to the computer with. Locating this information is fairly simple. Go to the Device Manager, which can be located in the Hardware tab for the Properties under My Computer. You can check under the Port sec section which COM port the printer is communicating under. Change the settings in RepSnapper accordingly. The next step is to load your STL file. In this example, we went on to Thingverse.com and found a Wade extruder gear. Finding the file on our system, we load it up and then convert it to G-code. For more advanced prints, you may want to use programs such as Skeenforge to make the G-code. The G-code produced by Skeenforge allows for a much smoother print and can directly be uploaded into RepSnapper. In our case, we will convert the G-code in RepSnapper. The next section involves changing the G-code, as software problems could arise if they are not checked. Going to the G-Code tab, we look at the M104 line. The M104 code corresponds to the temperature of the extruder. The printers in the Penn State RepRap classroom use extruders that need around 200 degrees Celsius to run properly. Changing the number next to S will set the temperature to what you desire in degrees Celsius. After the G-Code is set correctly, you will need to check the other settings in the program. An important setting is the speed of the X, Y, and Z motors. The X and Y motor speeds are generally significantly higher than the Z speeds. Typically, the X and Y speeds range from 2000 to 2600 millimeters per minute. For the Z motor speeds, the range is smaller, around 120 to 140 millimeters per minute for a Prusa printer, and about 70 to 90 millimeters per minute for a cells printer. We will now prepare the prints. Going to the print tab, we will home the platform and extruder. The first, second, and third rows represent the X, Y, and Z position respectively of the board and extruder. You will want to make sure that while moving the board or the extruder, that the flags are catching in the optical end stop or mechanical switch. This is very important because as the program always automatically homes itself before each print, and if it cannot do that, then the print fails. Also, if for example, the extruder flag is not catching in the Z direction, it will not know when to stop, and the extruder could potentially crash into the board and break. Once the flags are aligned, home the extruder in the X and Y direction. Before we home the Z axis, we will raise it up a bit and turn the heat on with the extruder. Watch as the temperature rises. If we set up our G-code correctly and the M104 is right, then it should go to 200 degrees, or whatever temperature you set it at. Unfortunately, we are not connected to a printer at the moment, so you will not see it go to 200 in this tutorial. Once it hits 200 degrees, you can hit the Run Extruder button a few times for the plastic to extrude out. Once it is flowing smoothly, use tweezers to take away excess plastic from the board. Carefully home the Z-axis down until the extruder is just hitting the board. Finally, we will print the piece. With the G-code and everything calibrated correctly, hit the Print button. If you see any problems arise during the print, such as the plastic not sticking or the print is starting to shift, hit pause to stop printing. If there is a more immediate problem, like the extruder starting to smash into the board, pull out the power cord in the printer or the USB connecting the computer to the printer. Sometimes RepSnapper will randomly crash and close. If this happens, reopen the program and try again. It's unfortunate, but this is a problem that happens randomly and without warning, so always be prepared in case something happens. Hopefully, following the steps in this RepSnapper tutorial, you will be able to print successful 3D objects on your RepRap printer. Thanks for watching.